Hey, friends! Barky Dog here, back with another movie review. Now, as I told you last time, I've not been able to get to the movies for quite a while. But I went to see The French Dispatch and loved it. Not just the film, but going to the movies again. So much so, I decided to see another picture this week that I really wanted to get a look at. Namely, the new version of Dune. I've never read the books, so the only thing I have to go by is the movie from David Lynch, which I quite liked. I've seen that a few times over the years, and if you get a good cut of it, the movie's great. However, it is still very weird and Lynchian. This new version is probably more accessible to general audiences, and to be totally fair, that's probably thanks in part to Lynch's film being out there. You kind of know the story already, so it's easier to follow along. What's it all about? Well, there's this galactic empire, which is controlled by an emperor, and several noble houses which answer to him. Young Paul here is the heir to House Atreides. They're the good guys. House Arconan are the bad guys. And there are other houses, but those two are the important ones. There's also a cult of witches with psychic powers that are important as the story goes along. The Emperor is worried about the power both houses have, so he connives to set the cat against the pigeons and start a war between the two. House Harkonnen has been mining a special material called spice, which enables space travel, and it can only be found on this one planet. This desert world is dangerous to mine as these giant worms in the sand are attracted to any vibration. The native people who dwell on this planet are the Fremen, a race of desert people who are kind of like a cross between Arabian nomads and the aboriginal people of Australia. Anyway, the Emperor kicks House Harkonnen out and puts House Atreides in charge of the mining, and that ticks off House Harkonnen, and they try to take over. Edward Scissorhands here has been learning the psychic witch magic since his mom is one of them, and he looks to be the chosen one who will free the people of the Spice Planet and save the galaxy. So after House Harkonnen attacks and kicks Major Ass, Frodo and his mom go out into the desert to find the Fremen and try to convince them to help. Well, not as colorful or as 80s as the Lynch movie, the new Dune is very impressive. It's very cinematic and well written. The production design is excellent, and the worlds we see have a reality to them. Even the dragonfly copters look like they'd work. Speaking of the tech, the biggest improvement here is the personal force fields the characters wear, which are a big step up from the ones Captain Picard had in the Lynch version. The soundtrack is great too, it really fits the action. It seems almost like a mix between the sound they used for the monolith from 2001 with all that oh, oh, stuff mixed with the music for the elves from the Lord of the Rings. Anyway, it works. Speaking of the Lord of the Rings, like uh, that movie, the material is so long here they had to find a point to stop part one. Otherwise, the movie would be like six hours. I think they chose a good place to end part one, which still leaves lots of room for part two to finish the story. Granted, the movie is long, but it doesn't feel long. And it's slow, but not in an annoying way. 
At times, it's almost like a visual tone poem, but it keeps you engaged and immersed in this world. The effects are nicely handled as well, never being too much or overbearing or overshadowing the characters. So I can totally recommend this one, and I think it's a movie best seen on the big screen, so if you can go, by all means, see it at the theater while you can. While Dune is still in theaters as of this recording, no doubt it will soon be available on Blu-ray and digitally from Amazon Prime. You can watch my review of The French Dispatch here. And down there, you can see some more reviews I've made of sci-fi movies. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.